everybody. Welcome to the Unconventional Therapist Guide to Nothing. My name is Dave, and I am joined with my co-host, Greg. My co-hostess with the mostess. So, Dave, normally I'm not Just about... lost over the Beetlejuice reference. No, I, great. I'm glad a new Beetlejuice came out. I'm actually very excited. It's really touching because I, I have a good, like, a lot of, like, kind of core memories about Beetlejuice as a kid. Yeah. Like, the that scene, the Harry Belafonte... We, we, we've all seen it. Craig. Okay, see, the, you never know what to do with you. But I, I, I'll i tell you one thing, though. I don't like to do the small talk before the show. But Why? I have to... I, I just... I don't know. It's just... I kind of always like to dive right in. But Why? I, Why? Uh, don't therapize me. I'm, I, I'm just curious. Why Why don't you like to do the small talk? I noticed this. Obviously, I call you out on it every time. Why don't you like doing it? I think it's just because... I think people want to hear... Like, they see... Oh, Sideshow Freak. Let's get into it. Right? Whatever we're going to call this thing. And they all talk like a, a sassy teenager? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that's what I'm wow. used to. So... But I do have to mention something... Um, so I'm, I'm oh, on, so we, we small talk when only when I need something you. to say. Yeah. Right. Wow, exactly. Okay. I'm, I'm, you might be happy to hear this though, because I'm, I'm going through the social media and then I see something advertised on a, a local magazine. And by saying local magazine, I think it's sort of like undercutting it a little bit because here in Rhode Island, Rhode Island monthly is a magazine that, that I cherish. I actually love it. There's always, um, you know, best clam cakes or like what, whatever, right? Yeah, like yeah. some something best that's kind bar. of yeah. best haunted places. Sometimes they have some really cool stuff. Um, but I'm going through and I see it and there's Dave's head on there for, you know, local, his, his other, you know, sort of work, his other podcasts, his other, um, I don't know, what would you call Endeavor? that? Endeavor? I don't know. Endeavor, yeah. Business? So it, it, he's, he's displayed front and center on the cover of it. And I was like, you know what? Honestly, like it made me feel a little bit, I don't bring it up, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Cause like sometimes when you're like, I saw that and I was like genuinely happy for, for you and like um, Brandon. And I was like, yeah. wow, that's like really, really cool for them. Like they, you guys really plug away on that thing. And it's awesome. I have friends Thanks. that talk about going to those, like the, the events that you have, the movies and it's, you guys are always kind of, you know, keeping, I think keeping something kind of spooky all year round, it's like super fun. And, you know, it keeps people who are really into that Halloween that that this time of year, which I think kind of starts in September, um, gives them something to, you know, wet their palate year round. And I think that's really cool. And I was, I was, I was happy to see it. And it, and then inside right. I was like, it's nice that, you know, hard work sort of pays off sometimes. That's, and you know, that's probably been like the, the, best feeling about it was mm -hmm. like because i've been doing that since 2018 and um a lot of like feelings of being underappreciated or like not recognized have happened and you know getting some um a publication like that to kind of recognize was was pretty awesome but also you know it's kind of like what we do it's um people getting together with like a similar interest mm -hmm. and um i mean it's it's very similar to like us with just enjoying talking about psychology and and mental health and sometimes weird and murderers and brains and stuff like that yeah 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 i mean i so it's like it's just another version of that um that i've been doing and um yeah like you mentioned just so people have an idea what you're talking about that um uh, the pvd horror group that i uh co-run you know we do been doing movie screenings podcast all these different events uh for years and yeah they wrote up a little blurb but um yeah it was pretty cool so, so if you're into horror check out pvd horror because i think it's cool um yeah. i'm not a super horror guy but i think that like there's I've, I've been to a couple of events and the people involved in that are always super nice i think there's something very interesting about people who have the courage to look at the darker things in life because yeah that's what makes a good a person a good person right if you have the courage to turn around and look at your own darkness then you're, it makes you certainly more well-rounded. And I think, um, ironically, when you run, run, meet people who are like into metal or horror, yeah. they're ironically very kind people. So yeah, check it out. Um, but, you know, kind of sticking with that theme, sort of, right? Sure. Let me sure. Um, talk about a couple of things here. So shows that I appreciate, My Weird Obsession. I don't know if you've seen any of these. Maybe someone's eating cotton balls. Maybe No, no, no. Isn't it My Strange Addiction? 
<laughs> oh, all right. Sure is. That, is. is that what you were so, referring to? Yeah. This guy passed the quiz right off the bat. That's great. What about my thousand pound sister? I doubt that's the name too. You know what I mean though? My 600 pound life. And then yep. there is one about a, two sisters. I can't remember what. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't I know, know what it's show. like, Amy. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a great show. Taboo, right? Taboo is another one. I don't know if you remember Taboo. I do remember Taboo. I remember Ripley's Believe It or Not. I remember, but like even, even changing out of that vein, think about shows like Jersey Shore. Think about Jerry Springer, right? We we have a culture that's obsessed with observing obscurity, and that's a triple alliteration. Purposely Did I ever done. tell you about the time I was on Jerry Springer? <laughs> it didn't get aired, but um, you you were not I, the father. <laughs> I I got called up on stage, and I did a dance off with someone on the stage, and I did like a weird uh version of like thrusting and the worm to um I touch myself in front of a, an audience <laughs> wow i kind of um went like just blank just <laughs> in order to get like the cards to do it but i had to do it because like i was on stage and uh i just put in my all and that was pretty wild i have a video what, is that on youtube time. <laughs> no I'll, I'll bring it i'll show you yeah sometime. let's see a clip i mean we're on uh, YouTube. let's see a clip i would like to post right? it yeah yeah <laughs> so you know we're, we hey look we're talking about human beings on display right that's what we're talking about right here when you're when you're on there you're doing the worm you're thrusting around like there's this voyeuristic nature in all of us i mean we're, we can go back to the coliseum um deformed handicapped people were gracing the halls of you know buckingham palace whatever palaces in europe all over right um they would have you know dwarfs and little people i don't, can't say dwarfs anymore little people Close um people. all kinds of anomalies right uh, but like, what interests us about this, Dave? Like, what is this? Like, well, I, I, it's, I think that's going to be part of this episode is trying to understand, especially through the lens of the Victorian era, which is, I think, the most interesting um, portrayal of what we're talking about here, sideshows. Um, and I, another question I want to ask us, and maybe we can get to the bottom of, is was this exploitation? And is it exploitation... Um, if it's chosen, right? Like, like when we talked about Elephant Man, he was sort of chose to be in the sideshows because it was better than being in the workhouses. So it's like, sometimes we do this weird thing where like, we think we know better for people who are in sort of like a marginalized. And so we, we do this thing where it's like, no, like we, they can't, we can't do that to them where it's like, well, that's actually helping them. But I wanted to ask you this question because it's making me think about it now. Like, and I, I think that at some point, because I've been seeing this a lot with with young men or actually all men, um, not always, but a lot, is exploitation. Let me ask you this: like, well, like porn is that exploitation? If it's chosen, or can it be chosen? You what know, do you like, mean, can it be chosen? So you know. I, I I know that we've talked before, like we're like, you know, I've known people or have had, even had patients in the industry and, you know, there's, it's never, well, I can't say never, but in my experience, it hasn't been that there's been like a great background, a great upbringing, a super healthy family life, and then chosen to go um work in the sex industry and maybe that's yeah, but i not think that's case. changing so uh, i think that the, sure. there's a lot of uh changes that are happening in society that are making like bringing light to that industry and kind of making it an industry that's i don't know as you say has, that right i'm kind of thinking like um i'm, I'm a boomer because I, I i wasn't really considering only fans but even still i don't know like yeah. maybe there's some yeah. maybe there's gonna be that's like kind of what i mean block. You know. and, and even getting in yeah more mainstream it's become more mainstream you know and you know that's kind of probably its own show to be honest Absolutely. with you um but you know i i think like when you think of probably what you're envisioning is some of like the earlier versions of it that we would know but even like you know for us even to comment we're probably both 
too uninformed to really give a good judgment because we both have like us probably like a stereotypical version of it in our heads of how like in that might even be just like hollywood's version that we've seen in movies where people stray onto the wrong path or something like that yeah and like and it's um, even like if i if you talk to like even your parents or your grandparents especially if they were still alive i just talked about one of those ouija boards in your room but like yeah. if if like you know sometimes people have been living away like maybe i've been living in a certain way or have an an idea of culture and what's appropriate and what's healthy that i might have a hard time understanding that you could be sort of mentally healthy and and still want to have an only fans and sell you know i mean i do think there's something to the psychology of wanting to and this kind of just to kind of bring it back to what the topic is yeah, there is something please. in our psychology that like actually makes us want to show off certain aspects of us that might be vulnerable mm -hmm. whether it's your naked body or some sort of physical deformity or something that um makes you different than the general population right so i do think that there's something about a person's psychology that makes them you know, brave enough or embrace that vulnerability to do that. And well, I so think say, that's going to be pretty topical in this episode is why. Well, so like, for example, I think I'll give you a quick example that I'm thinking of in my head and then we will get back on track. Um, but like, say someone like a, a young woman's abused, right? And and she was sort of take like sexually abused. And so that was out of her power. And so she's like, I'm going to take my power back and own my sexuality and actually make money on my sexuality. Sure. Right. So that seems like empowering, but you, you wouldn't had been on the path to selling your body on the internet. Had you not been abused now, is that an appropriate adaptation? Yeah, but that's, that's one version of it. Cause there could right, be another no. version where someone's like, no, I'm not going to make choice. I'm not going to engage in things like that because that's me taking the power of what I choose to do with my body. I think that's the whole point is they can mm. choose whichever path they want. So yes, yeah. they could choose to be in the sex worker industry, or they could choose to be, you know, abstinent, uh, whatever they have the choice is what yeah. I think the point is. I mean, and like that example though, is like, it, it's cookie cutter, right? That's kind yeah. of what we think of when we that's think of like someone who gets in the industry and what might make yeah. them, that would be so, uh, that would actually be really interesting to hear different versions. Me like, too. Yeah, what, I, what made I, you I, get into that industry? Right, right. No, I would. So that would I actually would. be something interesting. So maybe that's a maybe that's an episode for down the road. Maybe guys. that's our next podcast. Um, Greg and Dave get into porn. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to work on that name. We're gonna have to workshop that because I think that might send the wrong message. So <laughs> Dave, conventional we, pornographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so unconventional. So <laughs> let me let me tell you something. Um, maybe it's time you talk a little bit about the history of the sideshow. Yeah. Uh, and like, I don't. Do you? What do you think? I, I mean, I would say sideshow. I think, I think sideshow sounds classier. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, what I mean, but if we're talking about like, I, I, everyone knows what we're talking about, yeah. right? Like, I mean, yeah. in you know, I think that um, yeah. So freak show obviously has a very negative connotation, right? Um. But we know they're kind of interchangeable terms. And I don't think sideshow has a great connotation either. No, I'm part no. of a sideshow. I don't yeah. think that sounds much better either. Um, so I don't think it matters which one we really say. But I do want people to understand we're kind of using terminology of how they referred to it at the times, not how we are referring to it as of today. Um, and I don't really have like an in-depth history, but a few points I wanted to make about the history of it. Um, so like during the 1800s, uh, circuses at some point began to offer these since like um, sideshows, which were in addition to their typical acts. And they often included, um, you know, people or animals with physical differences and maybe like historical oddities or wax statues, you know, just strange and like um, odd things that people might find appealing to look at or cure, make, make them curious or uneasy, things like that. Um, these were ad ad advertised as dime museums uh, where visitors would pay to see a variety of displays, uh, sometimes referred to as human curiosities, auditoriums, human wonders, or freak shows. It almost reminds me of like, um, you know, like in those old, in the movies where like the guy goes into like the porn shop and <laughs> we're back to the porn again. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I know. What is going on? It's a Freudian here? slip. 
yeah they go into the porn shop and they you know put the quarter in and the the screen lifts and they see like the woman dancing on the other side that's kind of what this reminds me of almost like except you're seeing and like i actually think didn't they have stuff like that at like even in more recent like uh carnivals and things like that where they would have maybe i mean money in and you would see now maybe i'll tell you what yeah dreaming i maybe you're dreaming it and uh, but this is bringing me like like Freud wrote about this a little bit. And another thing that they would do was like the predecessors of Freud would have people with like mental illness come sit on stage and they would like put them on display for people to come look at. Almost like it's almost like a human zoo, which is like a really and that's what we're kind of talking about here. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. It is like a human zoo. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody describe it like that. You get that here at Unconventional Therapist, right? I heard it one time described as that somewhere else. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so the, the highlight of this, uh, you know, the sideshow was the quote unquote freak mm-hmm. um, or a person that was considered to be physically different. And the uh, performers of these freak shows were often marginalized by society. And, um, you know, they had very few choices of how to make a living outside of the circus. Um, so, you know, what they would, what would happen at times is like, whoever was like the circus manager, I don't know what you would call that person. Like the, the ringmaster, I don't know who, well, something, maybe something like that. Um, they would, you know, sometimes offer the family money, like I'll pay you such and such a week. Um, and you know, in, in turn, I'll take your child and bring them around with me. And, um, a lot of times the families were, you know core and yeah imagine that therapy session like the first session well it all started when my family sold me to the circus right right so so they would gladly give up their child because this child probably couldn't provide like help provide for the family or was considered to be like quote unquote a burden or Mm -hmm. you know something along those lines so yeah a lot of times the families sounded like they were kind of like thrilled maybe to unload this child and you know actually get paid for it Um, right and the first and doc- which in a weird is kind of sick way it in a way it is creating an opportunity for the child too and and i don't know like i would i would love to know what the the family's understanding of this is you know right. do they know that the child's going to be gonna be a star. maybe they know that but like what do they what do they know about the conditions mm. um and i don't think that early conditions were necessarily the worst later conditions i think got got bad but I think in the beginning, I don't think that conditions were considered to be as bad as, you know, we might have in our heads. Um, one of the first documented traveling sh- uh, sideshows in American history was in 1738, and it included a woman who was taken from West Africa, and she was exhibited. Um, there was a Virginia advertisement described her as a four feet as four feet tall and having the body of a woman, but the face of an ape. So obviously super racist. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's one of the earliest. Well, that's like 1738. That's shows that you like how long we've been we've been so curious. But I mean, we already know that. Obviously, the humans. I, I, yeah, very, beginning of time. Very curious. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like a brief overview. Obviously, not too in depth. But um, Greg, why don't you uh, tell us about our boy PT? Yeah. So this is when you think of sideshows and you think of you know sort of. I don't know, like the maybe the most the biggest contributor to this, the, who who kind of like brought it into the forefront of our consciousness is P.T. Barnum. We all know this guy, right? So he was born in 1810, considered the greatest showman, which is kind of, have you seen that movie? No, I did not watch it. I have not either. And people tell me it's great, but I'm not really one for a musical. Mm. So this, you I bet you have been to the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus though, right? Yes. So this, but I don't. I, was, I barely remember it. Well, I mean, it's it just. I don't know if they're still um, touring, but they were canceled for a little while because of the animals. And they, I you did know, I go to a circus like within the last fifteen years, and I think it was PT Barnum, but I can't say for sure. Well, the Bar- it probably was Ringling Brothers and Barnum. Really, that's been around for a really long time, and it's it was wildly successful um until kind of it wasn't but anyways this guy he's a he's a he was a mayor he was an entrepreneur philanthropist um but again like more than anything he is a showman so do you know that sort of quote that is attributed to him a sucker is born every minute oh i didn't know that was him well it actually wasn't 
Um, there's no evidence that it was him, but people would feel like, hey, that's something P.T. Barnum would say, right? So it is early 20s. This is the kind of, like, let me just kind of like kind of clue you in on the type of person he was. He starts a newspaper in his early 20s. Um, he's starting slow, but he ends up creating, quote, Barnum's Grand and Scientific Museum. So his real showman career starts when he's about 25 years old. He purchases this, this exhibition, which was a person, just like you're kind of talking about. It's almost reminiscent to what you were talking about in 1738. It's this paralyzed, completely blind slave woman, right? And what he does is, he, the, the most important thing that happens here is he starts to realize that there's a genius element to this. Like, he doesn't just say, hey, look, like before in 1738, here's this woman that looks like this. No, that doesn't do much good for anybody. What he does is uh, he creates a story. This woman's name was Joyce Heath, right? And she was, you know, in her 80s. But he would explain that she was the 161-year-old former nurse of George Washington. Hmm. Now, by doing that, you create a really cool story. Now, when I was, I was, I don't know if I've ever shared you, with you this story about how important a story is to an object, but there is this, um, this show I was watching and this guy's explaining how he has these plastic cufflings and everyone's making fun of them. And they're like, oh yeah, those are, you, your son bought those for you? Like, big deal. They're like plastic cufflings. And he's, like, he's like, no, like when I, um, when I, when he was a little kid, I took him to a baseball game and these cufflings are made of the plastic on the seats that we sat in. And now that you know that, it makes this object so much more valuable and important and cool, right? So that's what P.T. Barnum, that's his genius. So he, he, he finds things like the Fiji mermaid and Tom Thumb and albinos and little people and exotic women and bearded women, and all these kinds of animals. But it's the advertising that's, what makes him the greatest showman these stories about what these things could have been the possibility the awe right when you see a fiji yeah. mermaid you're like holy geez that that does something different for everybody i remember, do you, i don't know if you we've ever talked about this but i remember one time i came home in i turned on this is back in the days where everyone on cable i turned on the discovery channel it's like halfway through and some people are going to relate to this it's like halfway through a documentary about mermaids and it's like showing all these like scenes and i'm like like having this woman like are mermaids real like is this a real thing and then i found i didn't i literally didn't find out the next day until in work that it was like a mockumentary not a documentary oh, yeah. but it was so well done and so like serious all the way through that i was like fooled into believing that there was such a thing as mermaids and i loved it i was like all wrapped up in it so i kind of like fell for this like showman trick where it's almost like showing you something that you really want to believe but it's almost like an urban legend where it's like, it could be true, but probably not. But it's kind of fun to think that it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so go ahead. why does he get such a bad rap? Well, I mean, because of as time goes on, we like, uh, you know, in the future, we like to pass judgment on historical figures for a very, variety of different reasons. But if you talk to people, if you could talk to people who, you know, like Tom Thumb, for example. Yeah, he was um, good friends with Tom Thumb. He was great. Tom, people were like, oh, you exploited this little guy. And Tom Thumb would have never said that. And this, there's a Ang and Yang, like these Siamese twins. And there's a bearded lady. There's, a, there's yeah. so many people who would speak out and say, you know, actually my life would have been like Tom Thumb owned the property. He, he met the president. He was, he was rich. Yeah, yeah. He met Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Like the, he, this, he wouldn't have had that had it not um, been. Do you know where Tom Thumb's from? Um, Narnia. <laughs> Charles, Charles Stratton is his real name. No, he's from <laughs> Connecticut. Oh, I didn't know that. His, his tombstone is in Bridgewater, Connecticut. And I'm actually, I'm definitely making a field trip there one day because what? It is one of those like tall monument tombstones, mm. and um, at the top is a little person. Oh, that's I'm, really and I'm cool. thinking it must be him. Yeah, I get it mixed up with Tiny Tim. That's but Tiny Tim's a fictional yeah. hero. Yes. Yeah. So, well, here's here's, I I mean I don't know. So I guess that's a good time to ask that question. So, is it ex is it exploiting Tom Thumb? Yeah. Does that mean it's a bad thing? No. So, you know, I got a good example of this. Okay, good. Vern Troyer. 
Okay. Also known as Mini Me from Austin Powers, right? right? I mean, he made a a very successful career out of exploiting himself, right? Mm-hmm. Taking roles that obviously point, you know, fun at his size. Um, I mean, his whole role as Mini Me is literally it's funny watching a small version of a, a typical size yes. person, right? Yeah. Um, and and that's, I mean, that's exploitation to the fullest. What's the other one? Wee Man from um, Jackass? Wee Man from Jackass, yep. Like, that's another version of this. And he would do these, like, he would do, like, I even, I don't even like saying this now. It's like, it's so funny, something that we would say probably, like, 10 years ago now feels a little weird to say, but, like, midget wrestling and... Yeah, and, like, um, they would, like, throw them at, like, with yeah, they would, and stuff. Oh, they did it. There was a whole thing where you could, like, rent little people and you uh for parties and stuff and you could throw they wear like a velcro suit you could throw them on the velcro like totally exploitative of yes. like them I, and you know that i that that's hard to it's hard to wrestle against that one it's it's really hard to like yeah didn't like argue find an argue point in that one um but, well i mean work could be it could be tough to find work Yes. And maybe what if it's what if it's a, a little person owned business and they're like, well, there's a market for this. Here here's the flip side of this though. Okay. And it's and it can go like this for, you know, a lot of different populations, but cuz we're because we're talking about little people, I actually have a good example of like the opposite end of it. So, how would you feel if they ca- like say there's a movie and it's um a leprechaun, for example. Yeah. Could you oh, like a leprechaun horror movie? You could never envision that, I'm sure. Um, but no, <laughs> what if they didn't cast a little person for that role? Right. Is that actually like, is there something wrong with that? Is that them, you know, because like there's some people that feel like, no, we should be cast for it because that is, you know, do you know, get what I'm saying? It's kind of like the I opposite do, yeah. argument. Like yeah, we no, should be in that role because of our size and um, it makes sense. Cause like I actually interviewed for that other podcast, someone who was like upset that, you know, a certain role wasn't given to a little person um, because it made more sense for it to be that. Uh, it's, it's a very strange dynamic that like we would almost get upset in like the flip. Uh, well, the thing scenario. is like, you, you have to do this weird thing where even with like protests and like you have to do this weird thing where like you you in a sense by arguing for that person to have more rights which i think is great you're almost doing this weird thing too where you're like elevating yourself above them in a sense where you're like look i know better than you you shouldn't get thrown at the wall you know what i mean and you know Maybe. So, and and this is where it comes down to that thing that we talked about back to like the path of porn. Yeah. It's that when you empower yourself and when you decide you're going to make the choices of how you're going to represent yourself or how you're going to respect your body, it's your choice. Right. Live and let live. So who's to tell you that it's wrong right. to make the choice if I'm going to exploit myself? Should that label still be used then at that point if I made the choice to do it? Am I well, look, we're, 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 are we therapists because we've been sad and anxious? Probably. Right? Like, we both had some, you know... And we made a choice at one point in time that this is the path we're going to take because we're going to use the skills we learned from our own struggles and we're going to try to help others with this. And just because society deems that appropriate right now doesn't mean it's any more appropriate than if, you know, it went a different direction. Right? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure there was a thought. Uh, thought process at one point in time that if you ever struggled with a mental health issue, you should not be in that profession. Yeah, which right? is in, which to me is wildly. You were going to say insane, and then you're like, I was. probably not a good word to you. But I paused it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I'm I'm thinking of so many different scenarios that all play into the same thing. Like it's all right. It's like having a straight actor play a, a you know um, mm-hmm. a homosexual or something like that. There's some people that would say like, why wouldn't you just cast you know, homosexual for that role or something like that. Uh, and at a certain point, we all need to relax, I think. I, I right? do think that there, yeah. there is definitely some of that there for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I, I, w- the thing that we do as a society right now is we think everything is a malicious choice. Mm-hmm. When we're, when someone feels excluded, we immediately go to like, that was a malicious choice. 
we, we want to show everyone our virtues. Like we do this weird like virtue signaling thing where it's like, I you know, I know what's right and we're, we have to do what's right here. And you know, I'm not going to pretend like I'm an angel and that like I've never fallen into this because I, I definitely have probably been there with, you know, casting stones. You are a bleeding heart, Dave. There's no denying that. I, I definitely have, you know, my moments where I will have strong opinions about things. But the thing that I have to remind myself and, you know, I've been get, trying to get better and better with that is the thing that I do with people all the time is like, try to understand where they're coming from before mm -hmm. you make that quick judgment of why they made the decision they made. That's all. Don't assume you know that reason until you get more information. Because for years, you've been trying to better understand people. And by trying to better understand people, you've been better understanding people. And then, of course, when we, we change over time, we start to say like, oh, maybe that wasn't the best choice. Maybe that, I, I know. I sure. get it. But sure. here's the thing. Maybe we should get into some staples of the freak show. Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to do that. And I got a couple little stories for you, actually. Um, so the bearded lady. Now, that doesn't sound all that um, sideshow worthy these days, right? So, but if you're thinking of like Victorian gender ideology, it would have been like this woman. She has this beard, but at the same time, very feminine and like you know speaking very softly and wearing the beautiful dress and everything like that so it was like this you know contradiction right yeah. so there's this great story of this this woman it's kind of a tragic story but julia pastrana 1834 from mexico she teams up with this shadowy what do we decide on ringmaster i guess yeah Promoter. so his name is the I, I theodore know. lent and he marries her lent lent like the after like uh on the way to easter. easter yeah yeah so he marries her and he takes all the proceeds of course because it's 1834 and controls her and she had tons of skills like so she's she speaks multiple languages she can do all these sort of um she can spin things she's pretty talented right so she gets pregnant the ch she dies in childbirth and the child dies um but before the child dies the Theodore Lent realized that, oh, like that, the son was like covered in hair, kind of like Julia was. Um, and what he does, instead of just like honoring their death and kind of, you know, appropriately, he embalms both of them and brings them as a display. He finds another bearded lady, marries her, and calls her the, the dead wife's sister and creates this whole sort of display based on this, I don't know really dark yeah. you know marketing and his in his at the end of his life he ends up in a mental institution you can imagine why right yep so there's a fat lady that was a a staple i mean i'm just that's what it was called right yeah um yep. here's one that this one's a horrible name <laughs> yeah yeah and it's kind of on the nose right so pinheads um Maybe I'll talk about my, I think I've talked about that in the past, my experiences with um, someone who might have had microcephaly. Um, I, I used to uh, work with a, an adult that had it as well. Well, so when I was, should I tell the story? When I was a kid, um, my dad, you know, would go to the bar a lot and there was a person who was, um, you know, um, a microcephaliac? I don't know what you want to say there. Like if I had to describe it, they suffered from microcephaly, right? And he would just leave me there with that person. And I was completely freaked out um, and scared and had no idea like how to communicate because, you know, oftentimes these people will have, you know, intellectual disabilities, poor speech, you know, motor function is off, um, seizures and obviously abnormal facial features. Um. Yeah, I mean, a, a good example for that people probably already know of is um, the person that used to be on Howard Stern all the time, Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of memes with him in it. Um, yeah, he yeah. definitely had that. Yeah, so it's funny because it's like you you're, we're talking about how, you know, in history, there would be like court jesters who would just laugh at these people. There would be, you know, Jenny Lee and Elvira Snow were, were Pip and Flip in the movie Freaks, and, and obviously they were in sideshows too. And then you bring up, like these days, we were like, well, we would never exploit someone these days who has this disorder. But then you just bring up Beetlejuice. And it's you know, like, I was just no, thinking of Howard, Howard Stern in general was like its own sideshow. He used to bring on people all the time that had something. And 
it was done in a way to poke fun. Yeah, they would ask him like math problems and stuff. And and like, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of really in bad taste, I think. Right. And then and then how it kind of sells himself as this sort of woke kind of person nowadays, which I, I, you know, we all grow. Right. I mean, that's good and everything like that. But it's like, come on, man. That was some rough. That was some rough stuff. Um, Albinos little people strong men and then there was like skill players too like trapeze and and yeah. a lot of horse riding and everything like that can you, you think know of anything else? yeah there's um I, I don't really know what it's called but there's like so one example is this individual called lalu and it was he actually had like um and uh, like extra limbs growing out of it. it almost looked like another body was attached to him but with no head um so he had limbs like kind of coming out of him was there a story like a crab person or it's like a, I, I, I don't know if it's like um, a parasite, it's, if it's considered like a parasite or something like that. I've kind of read that and I don't know if that's real or not. But then there's also like Siamese twins, that, yeah. which is, um, you know, obviously conjoined. And sometimes they might share a head, but have like two separate actual bodies. Um, but I just, with like that Lalu, I heard that he had like a, his limbs were like, that that body that was coming out of him was like fully functioning, if you know what I mean. Well, yeah, well, he's like, like, he's like, obviously a twin, and he absorbed the twin, right? Sure. In, in utero, sure. Yeah. and then when when the mother gave birth, and whatever year this was, the doctors were probably like, oh, so, "Wow." So you know how I got into like when we were doing some of the research on like serial killers, I got into like the murderabilia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, there's like these old photos of these uh individuals and i'm like i think i want to collect those yeah i can see that a little bit right yeah i saw one of lulu and i'm like i want that yeah the black and white sort of there's a creepiness to it i think i have i gotta go look downstairs i think we have a tom thumb picture really him and uh his wife well i can't remember her name she had uh she was also part of the the sideshow yeah yeah, because yeah, she was a little person. There was like a little love triangle. I mean to say that. There was also a, a love triangle. Uh, That's that, another Freudian slip. Yeah, that that played out. And I can't remember the other individual's name. But yeah, there was I have a photo of two little people yeah. um like dressed very dapper. And I gotta find it. I, I was trying to look was, for it after I was researching little, this. Was like, little itty bitty little love triangles. <laughs> I mean, the the girl, I'm trying to remember her name. She was like tiny tiny it's Mm. when we're talking about like individuals who are like some of them under two feet under two feet that's insane like how do Mm -hmm. they even have organs at that like that as an adult that's they're little dave yeah organs are little yeah no so obviously but like how yeah it's it's mind-boggling is my it's fascinating it's really fascinating well, the thing is, there it, it does something to you. So there's like, and then you sort of got to ask yourself the question, like, what is creepiness? And I think if you're going to answer that, it's like but, this. But it's more to me, and I'm I'm not like arguing with you, but I, like just want to point something out. I think it's more than just creepiness because yeah. it happens. It's like there's just something. There's curiosity. That's uh-huh. like we're curious about things. Like it's well unsettled though. Some sometimes, but like all right, for example people with disabilities. I work with them. So I have this experience where like, I'll walk around, like, I'll never forget one of my first experiences. I was like 18. I'm walking with this individual with a disability and we're at the mall. And he he turns to me at one point and goes, why does, why does that woman staring at me? Why is she staring at me? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, because you have a disability is the yeah, only yeah, yeah. reason I can give you. And I was like annoyed for him. And I remember like starting to pay attention to how many people were staring at him or would look at him. And I'm like, and he's not even like, it's not like he had some kind of physical abnormality. It was just, he was, has a intellectual disability. And mm-hmm. I don't know, some of his features maybe displayed that a little bit. Uh, it's hard to say, but like I started to notice and I've noticed it ever since then and sometimes i will actually say something to people very rarely it would have to be like a very like rude person in order for that to happen but um yeah it's there's something that makes us curious but like i i think about kids they'll stare because they're trying to understand it right mm-hmm. like, why do kids stare 
they don't know that it's like they're not always like fully aware like oh that's rude to stare you know or like oh i shouldn't be staring so they'll no, just I, do and it I, and they'll I say something do, sometime i honestly think the right word maybe isn't creepiness but i think what's going on there and, and, and even with kids because they have to because here's the thing like your brain is sensing something different and it's sensing something where it's not at the point where you're you need a fight or flight it's not like I need to bolt right now. I need to, you know, so because if if you're every time your brain sends something that was a just a bit off, not quite alarming, but just a bit off, you'd be running and fight or fighting all over the place. But it's like this somewhere in between fight or flight and like unsettled, where like your brain is sensing something where it doesn't need you to run, but it needs you to pay attention, and because you might have to, right? Like I, I really, I, I really think it's like something about that that is. The creepiness i, I want to say that's that's the word for it unsettled um it, is it like biological where we're like detecting something that's off and it's like pathogen avoidant we're, like there's something different about this person this person's like me but there's slightly not like me and i need to be careful about that i honestly think that there's something very sort of evolutionary why we it's like almost like you. So, so when you want to look, you can't not. You have to look. You have if to. If you look. saw somebody that had some kind of, okay, let's make this personal. Yeah. And let's say it's like, there's nothing scary looking about this person, mm-hmm. and you glance, and then like you catch yourself kind of maybe like looking a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because you're you're finding them creepy. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Like, there's I, so, I can think of a thousand examples where like. I'm so curious, but like, I'm definitely not like uneasy about it. But what if you said, what if you're, what, if, you don't know what you can't put a name to it. So you don't, your brain is making you pay attention. For I think it's like uncanny Valley. That's exactly right. But I no, don't, because, well, but I, you, do you remember your big uh, revelation for uncanny Valley? What was that? It was that we were afraid we were going to have sex with it. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> That's what it is. Dude, that's what I, it could be, right? Like it, it's all those things. I just think we're attracted to things that maybe sometimes stray from what we know. Like it's, hmm, what's a good example? The whole idea of like, it's better to be unique than to look exactly mm-hmm. like everybody else, right? Why? Why? Sh- wh- like there are people that probably want to look like everybody else, I guess. It's more interesting. It's more interesting. Yeah. It's uh, different. It's special. I think it's it can be creepy. I'm not disagreeing that there can be that. But sometimes it's not. It's just like it makes you curious and you just want to look and you want to understand it. Better. I know. And the, but there are some hard truths here that we're talking about. It's like, so let's let's put your your now we'll go to you. Yes. Now I'll ask you a question. Please let's, do. You're, you're at you're at a gas station. It's late. It's dark. You're on a road trip. It's See, you're trim. already making it creepy. It's put true. me put me in the midday. I'm at the freaking outlet. No, but hold on. That's Let what me, I'm thinking. Right, I, I'm gonna I'm changing it now. Yeah, yeah. But I'm putting you back at the gas station, and you're pumping gas, and there's a beautiful, um, beautiful woman, blonde woman, just pumping gas, and you're like, you, you know, you don't need to look over and over again, or or like a really handsome man. Handsome, stunning, slick back hair, beautiful. Um, and then, and then you see a real pie zone, you know, you know, who's bald <laughs> and maybe the eyes a little droopy. And I'm like, oh. and for whatever reason, you're gonna watch one of those more than the other. And I don't that bald guy because he's he's shifty to me. No, and why? But there's, like, there's something there, right? Like, I'm not looking at that bald guy. I'm not. He's like the last one I'm looking at. You're seeing something that's catchy. Like you don't want to admit that you you your but it's your brain does that to you right like your brain doesn't know social norms your brain doesn't get what's politically correct it's gonna do what it's gonna do to to protect you and that's it well you know maybe not in the same vein of what we're discussing now but another thing i was going to get to with the kids is i think it's interesting how um at some point we understand it's not okay to stare right right it's get becomes ingrained in us. And it's something like, obviously your parents have to teach you because that's not like, that's not an instinctual thing. I don't know. Cause you always hear parents correct their kids. Yeah. <laughs> and kids are so innocent and pure because they will like say it too. Um, I was, I watched 
there was a woman once I watched her. She was in, um, she was completely covered. It was like 90 something degree weather. She had like a, almost like a veil on, uh, she was covered like long sleeves. Every part, inch of her skin was covered. A little boy and, and his dad were sitting next to her and the little boy goes up to her and he goes, why are you wearing that? And she very politely and nicely said, oh, I'm, I have to protect my skin from the sun. And he goes, why? And then she just started to explain that she has like, you know, this condition that makes her very vulnerable. And the dad, I could just, he's like, at one point he was like almost going to stop the kid. And then she's like, no, 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 it's okay. And um, I, I bet that dad was like probably crawling out of his skin. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, cause that in the dad's mind, like he's understands like that. Or so, he so believes we- that's something we're not supposed to do. We, which is sort of so counterproductive. Like we've as yes. a society been like, no, don't ask those questions so you can better understand this person and be comfortable with them. Avoid all that. Keep your preconceived notions. Right. And, and keep your distance, which is like, it just breeds fear, breeds hate. It's like the kids right. got it right. What that kid did was perfect. Yeah. And like the dad went along with it. Eventually he chilled out and the dad was ended up talking to her and I was like, watched the whole interaction. I was like, oh, that was a nice interaction to watch because I, I, I like, uh, there was so many layers to it, but um, yeah. And it, it actually makes the staring worse because now the staring is not met with questions. Right. right. Now we know if someone stares, like we internalize that as like, oh, they're looking at me because they have a problem with me versus they're just curious. Right. Wow. Okay. There's I want to talk. About, I want to talk about one last thing. Um, yeah, this this freaks movie, and I know you didn't get a chance to watch it, so I'll just go through it quick. Yep. It's it's is definitely definitely a horror be- film. You would love it, and I believe you know, I, I'm totally aware of it. I just never have gotten access to it. I was joking with you before that I'm not going to pay for it, so I'm yeah. just wait for no, it. You said you're going to after- you're going to wait, and what's funny <laughs> about that is <laughs> it came out in 1932. So yeah, um, yep. But there's this. So it's. It's made at a time, which is, this is kind of interesting, right? We talk about, I don't know if creepiness is again is the right word, but it's made at a time when you can use people with deformities about a people with deformities. Greg, can you um, lift yourself up? Because um, people are probably wondering what's going on in there and if you're one of the people that you're talking about. <laughs> right, yeah. So, I mean, dude, but do you ever think, so I, I guess what we were kind of talking about that before, where it's like, oh yeah, like we, of course, of course we're going to use, um, you know, people with microcephaly to play people with microcephaly in this movie. Like, but that's kind of like, but at the same time, are are they, so if someone has an intellectual disability, do they understand that they're being filmed and they're going to be watched? And, and I don't know, like this, this is, exp- this is again, this is exploiting, but, but it's also kind of good, right? Because this is what people say all the time now. They, you know, if, if you're making a movie about people with deformities, should you hire people with deformities to play these roles? I mean, right. yes and no, right? Um, but let me give you a quick synopsis. That was a synopsis. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me give you a quick explanation. I won't even try it again. Um, synopsis. I can do it. By the way, um, beautiful, beautiful trapeze lady in this movie. And so she she marries this. Well, she's in a relationship with this strong man. His name is Hercules. Pretty on the nose too. Um, and they had this plot to steal Hans, who is this this little person. He gets an inheritance, and they're going to steal it because it's a pretty sizable inheritance. She plans to sort of trick him, Hans, into thinking she's in love with him, and then she's going to kill him and run off with Hercules and the money, right? So the quote-unquote freaks figure it out, and this trapeze lady feels nothing for them she she can't i i guess the movie's in a way sort of about class warfare or like othering whatever um but she 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 cares nothing about that's made very clear that she is thinks that she's so much better than them they're nothing she can just steal from them he shouldn't be having that much money right and all the freaks they uncover this plot and they get her back in like a next level get her back so they turn her into the thing she despises most right they feel disrespected. So what they do is they blind her, they burn her, they cut off her legs, and they turn her into a sort of duck. Huh. And it's just 
horrific when they 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 show this and i don't think all versions show it but it is um you know she did this horrible thing and then it's like they answer back with an even more horrible thing and it's like it's it's just it's a really dark movie and there is something dave i don't know what, how you feel about that so you've been working with people with special needs your entire life almost right uh your entire professional adult life now if they were going to make a movie about people with special needs would you feel comfortable with people that you work with portraying people with special needs in a movie. I would want them to. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's all the, you know, you know? I, I, think I believe, cool. I think they would do a more accurate representation than, um, Cuba Gooding Jr. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Right. I mean, Sean Penn did a wonderful job, but like, I not, every, not everybody's Sean Penn. So repulsed and attracted at the same time, I think is a good way to explain this, right? Yeah. The, you know, the scene that obviously like is the most legendary is that one of us scene. And that is like chilling, you know, the dinner table scene. Yes. Yes. That, I mean, the way it's, it's so it's 1932. So there's already a feel there. There's already, and, and then I don't know. I, I was creeped out. I watched it on like a, like a big screen too. It was just, and then it made me like sort of, it reminded me of something that's not my own thought, um, but I can't remember who said it, but you'll pay money for any emotion. That's true. You'll pay money for any emotion. And, and that's what all these things do. So this reality TV, um, like sideshows, all this stuff, it, it invokes emotion, right? That's that's kind of what we're we're going to these things to do. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, I think that we've kind of fell into a couple of different things here that are, um, I don't know. Here, here's one last kind of take, like, like medicine and science and it's kind of ruined this thing. It made it impossible for all this like magic and tall tales to be fun. It takes the magic, like everything that the more we learn and the more we, you're, you're a baseball fan, right? Like everything's had the magic rip from it. Even baseball, where like when we were kids, it would be like, do you feel like you should steal the base? Do like that's how they played baseball. Even when we watched, you know, right. the Red Sox or whatever, it was like yeah, yeah. the coach had a feeling or the manager had a feeling, right? And, and oh, you should it wasn't based on statistics like it is now. And I don't know, there's just something well, everything's getting the magic stole from it. The more we learn, the more we rely on on numbers instead of emotion. So emotion gets a bad rap. Maybe even especially in what we do, like you can't really trust them. You know, just because you have an emotion doesn't mean you're actually feeling it. Use the logic, but I don't know. It's something really important. Emotion can make things really meaningful and powerful too. Yeah, wouldn't like um, in like Taoism, wouldn't they like say logic is link for fools? Yeah, but we see, but. It's always, but that's not true, right? I mean, because it's, you can feel, you know, if I'm if I'm telling myself the wrong story, um, but so is that is that if to say that you can always trust your emotions? Because we know that's not true. No, no, I think what it it is to say is like to trust more of like what's our nature, and that's kind of what we just talked about with like kids. Mm -hmm. Our nature is to be curious. Our nature is to ask questions. That's when we deny it, we're kind of denying ourselves certain experiences and certain information. Right. Right. So like if we sort of, because, you know, our gut or our emotions, our feelings, that's like, you know, if we're going to talk about Freud for the second time today, like that's, you know, our consciousness is the tip of the iceberg and and the rest is, um, you know, our unconscious and our unconscious is our feelings, our emotions, our mm -hmm. gut. Shouldn't we trust that thing that's so much bigger and seeing so much more than what we are? And, you know, our our consciousness is limited because of all those ideas. Like, you, we don't know why we're, we're at this point. We don't know why we're being quiet and not asking someone that question. Like, maybe that's, you know, but that's something that's been instilled with us since we were little. So it's just I thought of, lots, um, of, lots of take in. I thought of what I was thinking of earlier in the show when I was saying, like, um, doesn't that st still exist in certain like that idea of like uh free, like you know this curiosity or oddity thing and you go you pay a little bit of money and you get to see it um have you ever been to the big e i haven't in springfield mass 
No, I know so, about it, but I haven't been there. Yeah, very big uh, fair. What do you call right. it? Fair, yeah. Okay. Um, but they do have like a line of like carnival style things. They used to have an elephant that would just kind of walk circles and you could ride on its back. I don't know if they still have that or not. I kind of like sad to watch that. Um, but they would have this thing where it's like, comes, come see the, you know, the half boy, half this. And like, I never actually would go in because it's obviously not a real yeah. thing. Yeah. But um, now I kind of wish I had because I'm like, I don't know what that was in there. And that's a really, that's the thing. It's like, you want to know. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want to know, you want to know. Yeah, you, even if you don't. It's um, so, uh, you know, and it, my for you page sometimes on Instagram turns into that a little bit, uh, which is sometimes really troubling when you're in public and suddenly you're seeing all these like weird people. I'm sure that's what your for you page is. I don't even know what a for you page is. It's like that uh, page where they like recommend things based on what you've already looked at. But like, I'm going to say something that I'm going to regret. Um, one time I looked up like. You got to do pull, it now. Pulling ticks off people or like pulling bugs off out of like things. Like, why is it, why are you embarrassed about that? It's fast. Cause it's weird that like, it's like oddly like satisfying watching them like remove a bug from a person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, then thought, my feet I thought for a second there, like that. maybe you had a tick on you and I thought that would have been completely nope. appropriate to I watch. Watched, nope. I watched other people getting. <laughs> hey, good to know. Good to know though. Right. I mean, it is. Is, look, we got deer ticks here in Rhode Island, and yes. 24 hours to get those suckers off. So good to know. Um, and watch out also to our fans that are close. Watch out for the mosquitoes. A lot of like talk about that these days. Why? What's going on with the mosquitoes oh, these days? Man, they've found like a few cases of Triple E in oh, almost in, in a few different cities here in Rhode Island. So wonderful. Mm, and West Nile. West Nile stuff. Uh, not great. But, anyways, um, so. One of the things about this is like this couldn't, like you said, the magic's gone because of like the advancements of medicine and science, right? So like what was considered to be a bearded lady, now there's like a scientific explanation for that. Mm -hmm. And that like loses Boring. the ability for us to to yeah. have that curiosity about it. So like this really couldn't exist in today's society. And also for other reasons, this couldn't really exist in today's society. But there is something uh, like when you watch like an old a movie about a carnival or a show about the carnival or even like i said like even go to a fair and you kind of get a little bit of that taste like there is something about it that's like i kind of wish i could experience oh well look like they make no mistake time. we're still observing people like every dude look at Inst instagram is us observing people sure right i mean that's that's just a part of human nature um oh we've just here's here's a great example of that um there's this individual on Instagram and he calls it a chicken wing. So I was like, mm -hmm. um, his arms in the shape of, I guess, like a wing. And he basically uses like that platform to showcase like how, how he, he eats yeah. or how he does certain things, but like a lot of eating, he does a lot how of he eating. pulls, takes off people with it. <laughs> but, um, if it's for educational purposes, is it exploitation? Cause he's I'm sure he's making money doing it as well because i'm sure he, he's getting a lot of views and likes and stuff like that yeah well i mean but he's right. posing it as like showing people how he can you know eat a giant big mac and you're like oh well i'm glad i know how that operates now yeah 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 is it exploitation well we're not we can't say oh it's all exploitation but is it is that make it bad just because sure. is exploitation bad so right i would say if it's if it's for educational purposes what? is it and are we, we're unable to judge basically what we're saying. It's up to the person. Yeah, I think that's so it. I, I in think today's it's like, society, if you want to exploit yourself, go ahead. I think if a person has the capacity of free will, then we have to let them exercise it. Here's another version of this that um, somebody- Unless it's hurting some, someone or- some, Somebody posed this as exploitation. And I was kind of like, a little bit like I don't know if I agree with that. So have you ever watched um Love on the Spectrum? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Great show. Mm. Funny, charming, heartwarming, all those heartwarming. things. Heartwarming. Yes. Um so I, I asked someone if they watched it and they said, No, I don't I don't really like that show because it's just I feel like it's just exploiting them. 
And I thought about it. I was trying to figure out like, what could they mean by that? Like, why is it exploiting them? And then uh, there's that, there's always that thing that I co comes back to me is like, do they know why some of these things are funny? Like they're just being themselves and mm -hmm. we're getting a kick out of it. Is that exploitative? You know, like they're quirky. Mm -hmm. They have, um, you know, some traits that make them a little odd at times. But when you're, so when you're laughing though, and I know that I can speak for myself, like when, when I'm laughing at that, I'm like, it's like a very like, I'm not ashamed it's of in, laughing. It's an would, endearing it's, laugh. Yes. Dude, like I would do that, it if I was yes. like in a conversation with them. I, I do it. Still... I do. I, yeah. So exactly. I do it with, uh, you know, autistic patients. We laugh together and I, and I, you know, it's part of the process of like, yeah, no, that's, just, this is great. This is like, I, I don't know. There's something so real about it. So I, 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 and I think and that's I, kind of where I ended up landing is like, again, it's like the intent does matter at times. Like it's not a malicious intent. It's not like a ha ha. Oh my God. That's so like, Oh, there's so yeah, what, it, what like, an idiot. You know, yeah, I mean? it's, not like it's that nothing at all. like that. Um, but at the same time, it's also like, isn't that what connects us is the ability to appreciate Mm -hmm. the other. differences and yeah and like that's it. it's a beautiful things. sentiment that's yeah. it Dave. that's a beautiful sentiment and that that is what it's all about is like how, you know what about this person can i appreciate what about this person brings me joy and it just happens to be easier with those people right, right? and you know it, so coming back to the sideshows and i guess this is kind of like the last point that i have about this would just be i feel like that was kind of the initial intent Mm. to more of like to appreciate and sure somebody was going to make money off of it and maybe maybe that changed the way it was and i'm sure like obviously greed whenever money's involved obviously greed's going to be involved at some point and um you know if these are people that maybe they weren't regarded in the highest um way as they would be today um or protected in the way that they are today Obviously, a lot of bad situations can happen, but it did sound initially like there was, in some cases, not all, like obviously, a, you know, a person from West Africa brought to the States to be displayed. I don't think that that was necessarily the case. No, uh, but like, look, getting attention for the way that you look, getting paid for the way that you look, that's, that's just like the way that I, day. the way it was explained that like Tom Thumb, for example, was treated sounds more of like that was like, to appreciate this individual's differences. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, but it's hard to say because obviously we didn't live. We weren't there. there. And did things kind of suck? Probably because it was 1800s. Everything sucked. Everything sucked. You know, it's, it's Dickensian. So, yeah, it sucked. Uh, before we completely wrap up today, I just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to an individual on YouTube. Um, his page is XF. C97 or XF Introspector 97 is the, the full name. Um, but he gave us a really, really nice shout out on an episode um, based on our interview with Kathy and Sawyer, um, Sawyer being the former Heaven's Gate member. Um, he basically, this guy um, recommended three podcasts who have, you know, done episodes about Heaven's Gate and interviews and he felt we were very respectful and non-judgmental, and I think that that meant a lot to us because uh, that was kind of our goal was to go mm -hmm. into that being very open-minded and non-judgmental. Um, and I just appreciate the fact that he took the time to make that video to shout out others for their interactions. So I really appreciate that, and um, you want to kind of do the same. So um, XFC97 is the page, so thank you. Yeah. No, all right. right. That's what it. Got? That's it. I, I am out of words. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so everybody, thank you for listening as always. Um, please make sure you are subscribed on YouTube, like the episode, all that good stuff. Um, if you are listening on one of our audio platforms, please leave a rating and review if possible. We super appreciate it. Um, but yeah, just, you know, keep listening, keep reaching out, all that good stuff. And we will continue to provide the best content we can. So thank yes, you. Yes, we will. Yep. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. All that good stuff. We'll see you later. Goodbye.